This video will show you how to use SPSS to conduct post hoc tests. My name is Brandi Weiss. So now that I know that it, the buying format between at least two of my groups is statistically significantly different, I need to figure out which groups are statistically significantly different from one another. And so the appropriate method of testing for this will be to use some type of post hoc test or planned comparison. So I'll show you both of these methods. To conduct the post hoc test, I just go to Analyze, Compare Means, and One Way ANOVA, the same way that I did before. And notice here that there is actually an option. First of all, all my options are the same as how I had them before. So after you find statistically significant results, then you want to go back, rerun the analysis, and get those post hoc tests. So I can click on my post hocs button here, and I get a different pop-up screen. And this has lots of different options. So you need to know and be able to decide which type of test you're going to run. Now my homogeneity of variance assumption was met, so I have equal variances assumed. I'm going to go ahead and run a two-key test at this point, so I check that particular box. If that assumption was not met, you would want to run a different type of post hoc test. So it's important to know what type of post hoc test to run at this point. Once you select your option, uh, click Continue and OK. And notice that I get similar output, descriptive statistics, my Levine's test, my ANOVA test, and my robust test of equality of means. So the output is very similar to what I received before, but I get additional output now. So under post hoc tests, I have this box titled multiple comparisons, and this contains my post hoc tests for all possible pairwise comparisons. When you look in this box, uh, every possible pairwise comparison is actually listed twice. So, for example, auction versus buy it now has a mean difference of $50. But when I look down at buy it now, I can see that that's compared to auction again down here. Uh, but this is just compared in the opposite direction, so it's negative $50. This actually gives me the same exact test. And notice how the p-value for both of these is 0.174. That means it's not statistically significant. So just keep in mind that everything in this particular box is accounted for two different times. So each test is listed twice. I have six different tests that are listed, six rows of information in this. So that means I actually have three post hoc comparisons that were compared. When I look here, I want to know the p-values. So when I look at the p-values and compare these to an alpha of 0.05, my auction versus best offer, this has a difference of $92, and it is statistically significant. In order to figure out which group has the larger mean, you can look at the mean difference of negative negative ninety two dollars notice it has a star next to it to indicate this is statistically significant and since it's negative this tells me that the group in the second column best offer has the largest mean it's statistically significantly larger and the other way we can determine that is to just look back at these mean values in my descriptive statistics table and when I look at them notice that when I compare auction it was five best offer that is $642, so it has a difference of $92, and best offer has the largest mean value. The other comparison that's statistically significant is buy it now versus best offer. And again, best offer uh, is listed in the second column, and this gives me a negative value of $142. So when I compare these two mean values, I get a difference of $142, and this is also statistically significant. And when I reflect back on the means, I also notice that best offer, not only is it statistically significantly different from the other groups, it also gives us the higher mean value.